Erev Tov, I'm Stephen Benoon. You are watching Israeli News Live. Uh, very serious things keep happening worldwide over this uh, nuclear deal that has been reached with Iran. And we're seeing people rush to, to take and deliver uh, weapons to them. And unfortunately, Russia is certainly at the front line of that. Uh, so very, very disturbing news. Uh, this is coming out of the Moscow Times. as Russia lifts ban on S-300 missile to Iran strike uh, in exchange for uh, or strikes an oil deal. Uh, this was actually reported on Reuters originally. Uh, the Moscow Times covered this as well. It says Russian Pre President Vladimir Putin on Monday paved the way for long, as they called it, long overdue missile system deliveries to Iran in Moscow started an oil goods swap with Tehran showing the Kremlin's determination to boost economic ties with the Islamic Republic. Now, of course, Russia is under the sanctions from NATO and their allies, uh, and, and it's putting them in a very tough situation financially, so they're definitely looking for new markets rather quickly. And it goes on to say in this here, the Kremlin said Putin signed a decree lifting Russia's own ban on the delivery of S-300 anti-missile rocket system to Iran, removing a major uh, irritant between the two after Moscow canceled a corresponding contract in 2010 under pressure from the West. A senior government official said separately that Russia has started supplying grain, equipment, and construction materials to Iran in exchange for crude oil and uh, under a barter deal. Uh, sources said more than a year ago that a deal worth up to 20 billion was being discussed with Tehran and would involve Russia buying up 500,000 barrels of Iranian oil a day in exchange for Russian uh, Russian equipment and goods. Uh, seems like Russia is planning on stockpiling for the very soon uh, conflict that's going to go global between the United States and Russia. In fact, also uh, for those of you that may not be aware. Uh, there was, uh, and, and I say this for the sake of Americans that may not be aware of this, on, on uh, East European news, we picked up a program, uh, I forget if it was in Hungarian or which language, language it was in, but my father-in-law picked up a program that you guys actually had in Washington, D.C., a blackout. There was, they'd lost complete power. This is right before the United States had, uh, had decided to open the Cheyenne Mountain uh, uh, strategic missile uh, defense system place that had been mothballed back in 2006 by Pre President George Bush. Uh, but the, the situation here, though, uh, according to the news that we were picking up, is that this was actually an attack by Russia. Uh, the United States also had done uh, what was supposedly, according to uh, RT news, is, is that the United States was using a uh, multidimensional attack on Russia just recently. And there's a lot of issues going on in Russian news about this. Uh, so uh, Russia, in response, blacked out all of uh, Washington. And so tensions are definitely going. And, and it's we're, we're seeing warlike acts being fought against one another without a full-scale nuclear combat. Uh, not to mention the arms buildup of the United States. And we know that we've, we, as we've been in Europe uh, here recently, We've actually spoken to people here about it on the streets and many of the Eastern Europeans, of course we were in West Europe as well, but many of the Eastern Europeans are very concerned about the United States pushing at Russia. In fact, one man said, how long was he, will the United States push this Russian bear before he ends up getting angry and causes a war here? He says, we don't want that type of war in our country. We are at peace with Russia and we trade with Russia. And the last thing we need is the United States to, to cause this, uh, this relationship that the Eastern Europeans have with Russia to, to escalate into something worse. So we thought that was very interesting. Uh, but anyway, the, the Russians have agreed to do this exchange with Iran. Iran is getting all kinds of weapons and stuff. It's very much making Israel uh, uneasy. In fact, Netanyahu on Israel National News that posted an article here says, uh, Iran is grasping the Middle East with arms of terror. Uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu uh, once again blasted the West nuclear deal with Iran on Monday, stating in a lengthy series of remarks, that the deal is an agreement full of holes. 
There is no convincing explanations to the effect that nuclear deal being offered to Iran is a good deal for a simple reason. It is a bad deal, a very bad deal. Netanyahu stated speaking at the dedication ceremonial for the National Police Academy in Beit Shemesh, uh, it is a deal that leaves Iran in a position of capability to arm itself with nuclear weapons that f uh, fills its coffers with a lot of money and that not only enables it to continue its terrorism and aggression in the Middle East and around the world, but does not even demand that it stop doing so. The deal is only exacerbating terrorism in the Middle East, he added noting that Iran's involvement in regional conflicts elsewhere is only bound to grow with international encouragement. And as he's speaking there, because it is Iran's involvement with Yemen that, is, that has destabilized that region. It's Iran's involvement with, uh, with Syria. It is Iran's involvement with uh, Iraq. And the United States partnering right there along with him. Uh, just really blows my mind away. He goes on to say, Iran draws encouragement from the concessions that it is receiving from the major powers. Netanyahu said possibly referencing Russia's decision earlier Monday to lift a ban on selling Iran S-300 missiles. The message that Iran is receiving from this is that it is not being called upon to halt its aggression and that it can uh, continue and even increase this aggression. And this is exactly what it is doing. The article goes on more. We posted on Israeli News Live in our in our uh, Facebook page. There, you can actually see the article for yourself. Um, and, and and again, I want to share with you another article. This is from um, uh, uh, the Defense Minister, uh, excuse me, Foreign Minister Sergey uh, Lavrov. In an article, La, uh, Russia's Lavrov tells Israel not to worry about the new arms race after Iran deal. I mean, this is absurd. You remember we did that that in-depth look at the possibility, and I stress that, it's the possibility, it sets the stage, in other words, for the world to turn against Israel if Israel were to attack Iran at this particular stage of the game because they have signed a deal. They're, or they've not signed it, but they've got the deal. It's supposed to be signed in June, and the whole world, including Russia, and even on one of our inside sources there, Russia had become a, a stronger ally to Israel. And I warned that source that Russia is not our ally. You know, I mean, it may seem that way, but they're not. Uh, and, and the same thing with the United States. The United States is not our ally. I mean, we definitely have Christian people that love Israel that would back Israel with everything, with every breath in their body. And I thank God for that. But it's only those true believers that love Israel that are, are our ally. All these nations are coming against Israel. And if Israel does something to defend themselves, especially in light of the fact that Iran is being armed to the teeth by Russia now, just given everything they need, I mean, and, and Iran's already said they're going to wipe Israel off the map. And, and then all, they're do all these countries are doing this for us for money? This is ridiculous. No wonder why if Israel does something about this, it'll bring the entire world against Israel. Certainly it will. It is definitely a, a possible catalyst for such an event. Anyway, he goes on to say, an interim agreement between six world powers and Iran on Tehran's nuclear program will not lead to a new arms race. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov uh, said in remarks published Monday, the deal reached last Thursday by Iran, United States, Britain, France, Germany, and China, uh, and Russia would curb Tehran's nuclear research at least uh, a decade and gradually lift Western sanctions. So in the meantime, while you curb uh, their, their, their nuclear issue there, let's just go ahead and give them a whole bunch of arms and everything to where one, Israel can't do anything about it. They can't bomb them. And of course, they can just unleash all... Uh, I'm not going to say that. Anyway, it goes on to say, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has said that in a final agreement based on the terms reached in the Swiss city of uh, Lausanne would threaten his country's survival and increase the risk of nuclear proliferation in the Middle East. But Lavrov, whose uh, country took part in the talks in Lausanne, said there are no reasons for an arm race. It's not going to be an arm race. Israel is, they're, going, they're going to try to annihilate Israel. Plain and simple. It's not to say that they don't have enough weapons. It'll, it'll be God himself that intervenes, that keeps the total destruction of Israel from, from taking place. 
And of course, this is exactly what the Vatican wants. The Vatican wants to see Israel fold up under pressure from, from under some kind of a military attack where they can bring in a United Nations force there in order to be able to take over Jerusalem, which they're already, by the way, that's already, we're seeing, it's already taking place now. It's really sad. Anyway, but Lavrov, whose country took part in the uh, talks, must said there is no reason for, any, for, for an arms race. Iran will be the most checked and inspected country for the principles agreed in Lusanne, are transferred into a language of practical agreements, he said in an interview with uh, Dmitry Kislo uh, Kisloyev, head of the state news organization Rossiya Sig Signonia. It's, it's just terrible. It is absolutely terrible. And Israel is in just the worst predicament they can be in as a nation since, their, since the inception of Israel in 1948, the return of the Jewish people to their homeland, and now they are faced with a world that is turning against them. We are seeing biblical uh, proportions right before our eyes that are soon to be fulfilled. I'm Stephen Benoom with Israeli News Live. Shalom and Herathoth.